while the Dallas police had been thorough in removing everything belonging to the Oswalds from Ruth Payne's house on November 22nd, they had missed two things in the kitchen. In early December, Ruth Payne discovered in her home a cookbook and a child care book of Marina's, both written in Russian. Ruth took them to the police, thinking they would give them back to Marina, who might need them. The police did not look at them, but instead gave them directly to the Secret Service, who still had Marina in protective custody. These two books then made their way to Leon Gopadze, the only Secret Service agent who could read Russian. He decided to examine them before he gave them to Marina. While flipping through the pages, he came across a single folded piece of paper, a handwritten letter in Russian. Though it wasn't addressed to Marina or signed by Lee, it was clear who the letter was for and who had written it. After Gopadze had finished examining it, the Secret Service showed it to Marina to see what she had to say about it. Oh, that letter, she reportedly said. That was when he tried to shoot General Walker. She explained to the startled investigators that on the night of April 10, 1963, shortly after Lee Oswald had been laid off from his job, he had left her this letter. Then, with his rifle, the same one found on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository, Oswald perched in the dark behind a tree across the street from Walker's Dallas home. Walker was home, visible through a glass window. From his sniper's position, Oswald fired one shot. Just as he fired, Walker bent down to pick up a piece of paper on the floor, and the bullet whizzed through the air where his head had been seconds before. Oswald stashed his rifle under some brush and ran from the scene. He caught a bus home and excitedly confessed everything to Marina. Marina told us that Oswald thought he had killed Walker. The next day, he was shocked to read in the newspaper that he had missed. Marina said Oswald later returned to the scene to retrieve his rifle. Marina said she had kept the letter in case she ever needed to blackmail her husband. The police had had no clue on a suspect in the Walker case. During their investigation, the Dallas police knew I had been investigating Walker for inciting a riot in Oxford in protests over the desegregation of the University of Mississippi. The police asked me if I had any ideas on possible suspects. I had an informant who was a member of Walker's Minutemen who told me that the Minutemen were upset with Walker for going to Oxford in the first place. Through Walker's blunders there, he had caused himself and one of his aides to be arrested. When arrested, the aide had in his possession confidential documents revealing the strength of the Minutemen. My informant told me that because of all this, there was now talk among the Minutemen of replacing Walker as their leader. After I relayed all this information to the police, the police concentrated on Walker's own followers as suspects. Following Marina's revelation, the FBI lab compared the bullet recovered from General Walker's wall to Oswald's rifle. Even though the bullet had been partly mutilated when it was removed from the wall, and even though rifles typically change ever so slightly over time, the lab was able to find five identifying matches between Oswald's rifle and the bullet. Because the FBI lab required seven matches before they could label it a conclusive match, it was only labeled tentative. The Warren Commission had a second forensic lab, that of the New York State Police, check the bullet. While the FBI tended to be overly conservative in such matters, the New York State Police experts required only five matches for a positive and conclusive identification. Finally, one of Oswald's acquaintances, George de Morenschild, reported to us that a short time before the Walker shooting, he and Oswald had been discussing politics when Walker's name came up. De Morenschild mentioned that Walker, who was fervently anti-Castro, was just another Hitler. He told Oswald that Walker was a menace to society and that maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea if someone took a shot at him. De Morenschild told us he had said this in the heat of passion. 
he hadn't been serious about the comment, but he might have inadvertently put the idea in Oswald's head. The evidence was almost certainly enough to convict Oswald of taking a pot shot at Walker. Oswald also would have had the motive, for Walker had called the overthrow of Oswald's hero, Fidel Castro. The most remarkable thing was Oswald's modus operandi. In shooting at Walker, Oswald had chosen a highly visible political target, had left money behind with Marina before his crime, had used the same high-powered rifle with scope, had shot from a sniper's position, had stashed the rifle near his sniper's nest, had fled on foot, then caught a public bus, and he had acted alone. This was, of course, startlingly similar to the behavior of Kennedy's presumed assassin.